Bir sene ardışlı from Bursa Uludağ University. And today uh, I try to give a presentation about A2 milk, uh, which is very popular worldwide. So uh, I will uh, try to give the presentation based on uh, what is A2 milk and why is it so popular and what's the uh, fundamentals of the genetics uh, behind the A2 milk and the, uh, some uh, information, brief information about uh, A2 milk production dynamics uh, through the uh, dairy herds. And later, uh, I will try to talk about some uh, contradiction about uh, the effects of A2, A1 and A2 milk on uh, human health. So, uh, considering that I think uh, not everyone is uh, very familiar or uh, uh, very interested in genetics, so, uh, I will try to give a very uh, small, uh, brief information uh, about uh, uh, basic genetic uh, dynamics because uh, we will talk about the mutations and uh, polymorphisms because the main uh, subject behind the A2 milk is about uh, directly mutations. So, uh, first of all, uh, many things, many topics, many subjects that are very popular in uh, biology is directly related to uh, genetics. So, when uh, the current information is uh, rising uh, through years, new uh, scientific evidence coming from uh, the genetics uh, side and this uh, this information uh, are making us know deeply about uh, biology so uh, after invention of the uh, DNA structure by James Watson and Francis Crick uh, the uh, the information rise uh, about uh, genetics and many applications through animal genetics, human medicine, and many other uh, uh, branches of biology, uh, the current information uh, has risen. Uh, so today, as I said, uh, my subject is a2 milk, uh, but considering the uh, basics of uh, the A2 milk, uh, first we have to uh, know uh, what is the change between these cows, because basically uh, A2 milk is a special milk that's derived from uh, some uh, known uh, genotyped uh, cows. So some animals, some cows, uh, carry these uh, changes. We can, we should say that uh, they are mutations and some of them they do not carry or they carry the different uh, variant of the uh, mutation. So, uh, first of all, mutations are changes in genome in very general aspect, we can say like this. And they are alterations through uh, very, very big, we can say, uh, changes in the genome, like we can see in chromosome uh, mutations, or even it can be uh, only one uh, nucleotide, as we can see it in uh, SNPs or uh, point mutations. So, it, uh, here it should be noted that there is uh, a very small difference between the poly uh, SNPs and uh, point mutations because both of them are uh, the only one uh, nucleotide alteration. Uh, but it's only about the population genetics. 
And if the frequency of the uh, alteration from the nucleotide is uh, more than 1% in the population, we call it polymorph as uh, single nucleotide polymorphism. And if it is lower than 1% uh, in the population, we are calling it point mutation. But again, there's a, a point here for the terminological uh, aspect. If this uh, alteration causes a disease or disorder in the organism, we directly call it uh, mutation, point mutation. And in general terms, uh, these uh, alterations can make very distinct uh, variances through phenotypes. So uh, maybe many of uh, us or many, many people think that mutation is uh, a bad thing, that uh, kill organisms or maybe many of people uh, thinking about this uh, snake with two-headed snakes or uh, different disorders through body or something. But uh, we should know that this everything is in biology is directly related to mutations and alterations through genomes. Even from evolutionary biology and shaping the uh, species and breeds and uh, other uh, species uh, evolution through time and even uh, predisposition through different diseases or uh, the, uh, like breeding techniques through animal genetics they are all about mutations so we cannot say directly that these mutations are uh, bad or good it depends on what it reflects to phenotype so it's as we can see it's all about the central dogma of biology and what is that this is the uh, a flow from dna to protein molecule and it it comes from uh, replicating the DNA itself and then uh, continues with uh, transcription process from DNA to RNA and then translation uh, and it consists of uh, synthesizing the protein molecules from the knowledge from the DNA and the, with the help of the RNA it's making the amino acids and uh, lastly for the proteins this process is uh, evident almost for all uh, living things so it's a very uh, general process from bacteria to human so after this very very basic and brief information about alterations through genome uh, we sh now the main subject is the A2 milk or uh, the better for saying A2, A2 milk because it should be homozygous uh, for the A2 uh, variation. It's a special milk and uh, this is in worldwide, uh, it is selling, uh, many companies are selling this milk as uh, healthy milk and they suggest that a1 milk is uh, we can say evil in milk so it's a very uh, controversial and at the same time very important topic uh, in animal genetics and at the same time it's very important for the human health and from the beginning i want to i wanted to show you uh, the market size because it's of course it's about human health but at the same time it's a very huge uh, market and from the expectations it can be predicted that in 2030 it will rise uh, distinctly 
and uh, it can be up to uh, more than uh, 30 uh, billion US dollars. So uh, even now it's a very huge market uh, and I will talk about the details because it's not only about for selling milk. It's uh, it's about selling uh, cows itself and breeder, breeders and sperm and everything. It's a very huge market, not only about uh, milk. So uh, from the from the beginning, as I said, in some genomic locations, some organisms. Some animals, in this case, some cows, uh, carry the uh, particular nucleotides. And the difference between A2 and A1 milk is directly from a point mutation. So uh, I will show you the, uh, in the subsequent uh, slides, I will... Uh, show you the details about the uh, alteration, but in very general aspect, some cows are uh, carrying a special uh, well, a variant of the genomic location, and we are calling them A2 uh, cows, and the milk derived from these cows named A2 milk, and Normally, in conventional uh, breeding, without any general, uh, without any genetic testing, normally cows have both A1 and A2 protein, and this is conventional milk uh, that we can see, and it's normally uh, the in the markets we can buy conventional milk. And it, this milk has uh, both constitutes, so uh, they have milks from uh, homozygous and heterozygous cows. And it's only, as I said, it's not only about selling milk, it's, it's directly related to processed uh, milk products too, because we have many uh, products with milk powders and processed milk products. And cheese is very uh, important because uh, now it's popular that cheese is uh, getting uh, popular from the milk, from the A2 milk. And uh, even it is uh, very important for breeding for the infants. So it's a very, very huge market and it's rising uh, through years. And uh, as you can see from the graphics, uh, it's very popular in Asia Pacific uh, region. And it's now it's getting very popular in Europe too. Uh, and it's uh, originated from the North uh, America and Latin America. It's uh, getting uh from uh, famous too so from a uh, worldwide uh, the pop popularity of uh, a2 milk consumption is rising we can say and many producers they are showing their milk as uh, healthy milk honest milk and honest farming and uh, they have uh, many special cert, uh, certifications and of course gene uh, genetic companies uh, provoking these uh, production systems too because uh, there is another uh, part of this uh, idea because uh, to certify or to uh, provide your milk as healthy or we can say like uh, honest milk and uh, that uh, it is A2 milk, you have to test your cows and test your products too. So it's a very huge 
market for not only for in the production side at the same time for the genetic testing side so uh, later we will talk about the subject but some of the results or some of the suggestions are very controversial however uh, now it's a fact that there is uh, there are some important results from the a1 uh, milk consumption that it is uh, in some cases it can be unhealthy so in uh, from 2022 uh, as you can see from the map uh, many regions are very familiar to uh, this special uh, milk production so a2 milk as i said it's a cow's milk that contains only the a2 type of the uh, protein and the protein here is beta casein uh, protein and uh, it's encoded by the same name as you can expect it's beta casein gene it's uh, csn2 uh, as you i'm sure that you are familiar that these caseins are the uh, domin dominating uh, types of the proteins in cow's milk so this is the special uh, type of these caseins and normally uh, in regular milk uh, milk contains a1 protein 2 and these are the genetic variants of the beta casein milk that differ by only one amino acid and this um, so this amino acid uh, was en is encoded by a uh, particular uh, nucleotide so we can uh, we can understand that this uh, this is on, uh, getting only from the uh, uh, particular genotyped cows. So it was uh, for the first time it was licensed and marketed by A2 Milk Company, and it was founded in uh, New Zealand in 2000. So later, as I showed you, other com companies. Uh, and other uh, countries are fo following up uh, this idea. So uh, why is this A2 milk is so popular? Because uh, it is suggested that A1 uh, milk uh, that is... Uh, here it should be noted that there is no like special milk uh, like a1 milk so there is conventional uh, conventional milk that contains both variants and there is special milk as we call it a2 milk but the conventional milk has a1 type so uh, it has been shown that uh, a2 type uh, may have some negative effect on human health but uh, this is the milestone of the controversial results for the a2 a1 milk uh, consideration in two uh, in 2009 efsa the european food safety authority uh, reviewed this uh, published reports and the scientific literature uh, found that uh, they there are not enough evidence to prove that a1 have directly uh, harms the human health so but what is about this uh, unhealthy uh, dynamics from the conventional milk it's all about bcm7 it's a special peptide and it is a beta casomorphin 7 so if you will digest the beta casein beta casein uh, from the a2 type this is becoming to different type of uh, peptide it's bcm9 but if you will gather conventional milk and it consists of a1 type you will 
get in your body beta casomorphin 7 and this has uh, some opioid effects and this it is suggested that this harms the organism and it leads to many uh, undesired changes in the uh, metabolism and it can cause many different di disorders or diseases even from diabetes mellitus to uh, Alzheimer. But uh, as we will discuss later, uh, some of the uh, results are very controversial and they are not gathered from uh, the experimental designs. Okay, so uh, as we can, as I said, it's only, it's all about, it's all about the uh, processed peptide, we can say, uh, in the in the human body. So in A1 type, as uh, can, I don't know that you can see from slides, uh, this is the uh, processing uh, dynamics from the uh, digestion system of human. As you can see here, pep pepsin elastase and uh, trypsin elastase and pepsin. This is the uh, scheme of the uh, human digestive uh, system and enzymes. So here you can see uh, this BCM7 and BCM9. These are the processed uh, metabolites of the uh, milk. And normally, if you if you will get or consume uh, conventional milk, in uh, in some amount you will have in your body BCM seven, and but if you will uh, consume only A two milk, this BCM seven cannot be metabolized in your body. So you will have only BCM9. And it, it is suggested that BCM9 is the healthy variant of this. So as you can see from the uh, amino acid sequences, this BCM7 is cut early, we can say. So this is a, uh, this is a, a modified type of the peptide. Uh, because we, we know that the ancestor type of beta casein from the genomic studies, uh, this A2 is the ancestral variant. So we can understand that there, there was a mutation in this gene, beta casein gene. So this product, this peptide product was uh, modified. So uh, as I said, the A2 is the ancestral one and it is suggested like the healthy one and a1 is getting from the this all about it's all about the processed uh, peptide and it's uh, it has been showing that it has been shown that it is a, a very uh, unhealthy uh, variant so uh, beta casein it's a very f famous gene uh, especially for uh, milk product studies and as we can remind from the uh, milk studies, they are involved in transport of calcium phosphate in milk, and it is very important for bone development in infant mammal. Uh, this is a, this is again a very controversial subject. I don't want to talk about uh, too much for this, but uh, from the again from the traditional information we always known that this uh, this uh, consumption meat consumption is very important for uh, getting proteins and it's very important for bone development and etc but this is again a uh, very controversial you can see that this is very important for infant mammal so uh, milk consumption through entire life uh, is again a very controversial uh, subject but this is not the subject for today's uh, so i will uh, pass it okay uh, this is the beta casein is the most abundant protein in cow's milk and it's very polymorphic we are always talking about a1 a2 uh, types 
but this is only beta casein types and this is only one uh, two types of this va variants and uh, normally in uh, in theoretically uh, cows have 12 variants present in bovine milk so this is not only like a a1 and A2, A1, A2, A3, B, C, D, G. They they have many different types of beta caseins, but this A1 and A2 are the most common one and most studied one we can say. And it's very important to say that not every breed of cows uh, carry these uh, variants. For example, some uh, the, some lineages from Bostaurus, they carry only A1, A2, A3, and B, C, and this I and G, they don't carry. But in some different uh, lineages of the uh, cows, they carry different uh, alternatives. So we will talk about uh, uh, this subject uh, in later slides. And... As I said, this A1 and A2 are the most common and most studied uh, variants. And uh, as I showed you earlier, this is all about the process peptides. So the effect is coming from mainly opioids. And this, uh, these opioids are known to play very important roles of stress uh, regulation and pain regulation. But of course, it has many different effects on organism too, uh, from central nervous system. So this, uh, as I showed, this uh, BCM peptide is originating from the beta casein and it's 4 to 11 amino acids. And this is an opioid receptor agonist and uh, from immunology to uh, pathology of many different uh, diseases it it has been associated uh, and for example it has been shown to uh, stimulate human t uh, uh, t cell proliferation in vitro and uh, many hormones are uh, associated with the uh, um, consumption of this conventional milk versus a2 milk. So uh, now even uh, some researchers suggested that consumption, consumption of milk with the A1 variant uh, can be associated with severe symptoms of autism or schizophrenia. So just uh, try to think that uh, children are uh, drinking these products and uh, they are associated with many different uh, disorders, syndromes, and uh, diseases. But, uh, the, of course, many different diseases are associated, as I said, uh, from the diabetes mellitus to ischemic heart disease um, and sudden infant death syndrome. And uh, I think the most uh, studied one, or we can say uh, the most, uh, we can say like strong evidence is coming from milk allergy. As you can see, uh, even uh, this is a very uh, scorching topic in animal genetics, the main uh, results are coming from very earlier reports. And then there is a accumulation of uh, review papers uh, for making this uh, subject is very, very popular. This is a very important uh, topic in A2 milk. Okay, this it's coming from bovine beta casein uh, gene and it's cow gene and it's in uh, chromosome 6. Uh, and... It's from the boss towers. And uh, as you can see, it's all about allelic variants and uh, uh, amino acid alterations. So there are many different types of uh, variants. 
but we we have to focus for the uh, special uh, genomic location. It's uh, amino acid sequence uh, 67. It's it's an alteration proline to histidine alteration. So A2 cows carry proline and A1 uh, carry histidine. It's all about this. It's only about one nucleotide change and it's only about one amino acid alteration. But as I said uh, in from the genetics aspect, even this one nucleotide can be very, very important. So in this case, we can see that this all these discussions about uh, A2 milk, human health and uh, controversial human health results and from results for the uh, di diseases, they are all coming from this one nucleotide alteration. And you, you can see that these different types, these different amino acid alterations lead to different products. And these beta casein have uh, 12 uh, different types, different variants. And these all have some different effects on human metabolism. But as I said, the, this A1, A2 alteration is the most famous one and most known and we can say like most uh, scientifically studied one. So we still do not know the effects of the other uh, alterations in uh, different uh, peptides and different uh, alternative variants of the same gene. And later, again, I will show you in some cases, uh, direct uh, some milk directly marketed as healthy milk, even if it's not very ethical. And they some of the companies are selling this milk even without... Uh, genetic testing, it's very uh, unethical perspective, but uh, in some, uh, to a limit, they, they are right, because the uh, frequencies of this alteration vary among uh, different breeds of cows. So, for example, if you are... Uh, if you are getting milk from Gangsay breed or Jersey breed, they are genetically uh, produce more uh, fre A2 frequency. If we compare to other, for example, very famous um, uh, breed, uh, cow breed, uh, Holstein Frisians. So if you are selling milk from Jersey or Gangsay uh, without any genetic testing, your frequency uh, for the A2 milk is very high. So in some cases, some companies are selling the milk uh, that they get from Jersey Coast. They are selling directly A2 milk. That's why uh, this A2 milk in uh, many advertisements, they are uh, directly associated with Jersey or Gansey milk. Uh, this is not about the A2 milk is uh, the milk from these breeds. Only it's about the A2, this proline histidine alteration frequency. And from like naturally, from, from genetically, these breeds uh, are producing more A2 variants. It's all about uh, breeding system and their genetic composition. Uh, so in, as I said, in Holsteins, of course, it's very variable. For example, without genetic testing, uh, you, uh, Holsteins, for example, can exhibit very high uh, frequencies of A2 uh, variant in one country. And in, in another country, this frequency can be very low. But in general, L frequencies from the uh, beta casein gene of A1, A2 alteration, uh, we can say that 
A2 milk uh, A2 variant frequency is uh, rather low if we compare to this jersey and other uh, breeds. From my country, for example, even in native breeds, they are very changeable among different types of the uh, breeds. Uh, for example, it can be very uh, this A1, uh, A2 alteration frequency can be uh, very different uh, through the breeds, even if they are very closely related from the genetic aspect. So uh, this genetic testing is very important to get A2 milk. And what to use for genetic testing? Of course, it's uh, from the very basic aspect. Uh, you can genotype the cows even a very conventional uh, method, uh, which is PCR RFLP, or you can uh, use real time PCR method and other sequencing techniques, even very uh, like current one, uh, NGS technologies. Uh, it's all about the money per genotyped cow. So, uh, but to say the truth, the best way is uh, for genotyping is the uh, real-time PCR methods. They are very fast and cheap, cheaper uh, and applicable. And uh, it's very important to say that this genetic testing is not only for disorders or other uh, undesired traits, uh, in, for example, like cattle breeding, this genetic testing is very uh, popular now because the uh, breeders want to have the animals with the highest production levels. So they want to choose their breeds, uh, breeders, uh, with the highest genetic capacity. So SMP chips are introduced to uh, market and they are now very uh, commonly used. Uh, so in this genetic testing with SMP chips, they have uh, at the same time uh, the checking for A1, A2 alteration. And in a very recent uh, paper that we published with my colleagues, uh, this uh, real-time PCR uh, uh, with fluorescent hybridization probes are very, very efficient uh, way uh, and very uh, fast uh, and uh, very prefer preferable method for A2 genotyping. And this is very important for the companies or uh, farms that aim to produce A2 milk uh, because uh, as you can imagine, if something is very uh, popular uh, and profitable, you have to show that it is like you suggested. So you have to use a very efficient genetic testing procedure uh, to, uh, we can say, sell uh, like ethically to this uh, production to consumers. So genetic testing or genetic methods is very uh, important. And we, from our uh, uh, studies, uh, we observed some results at the herd level. Because as I said, this is a very huge market, but this alteration uh, can cause many different uh, or modifications or can cause many different uh, alterations in uh, cow level. So uh, monitoring the effects of this uh, alteration through the herd level is very imp important. And we, me and my some of my colleagues, we, we were already uh, studying the effects of beta casein a2, A1 uh, alteration, but on the effects of this alteration on cow production. So, uh, because this is a very important 
subject to. This is not only about uh, human health, but at the same time, it's all about animal genetics and pop animal genetics and population genetics. So, uh, as I said, these frequencies can be very uh, different uh, among different populations, and we uh, we in this study we observed uh, lo a very high uh, frequency of uh, heterozygote cows. As I said, this CSN2 is uh, beta casein, the abbreviation of the beta casein gene. And here, as you can see, you can gather homozygous A2A2. This is A2 cows. And these are heterozygous cows. And these are homozygous A1 cows. So if you have a farm and before genetic testing, you will have, you will observe all these three uh, genotypes. So the basic concept is to uh, have these A2A2 homozygous cows in your herd and uh, cooling this A1A1 homozygous and using like conversion to A2A2 you can use because if you will have genotype, if you will use genotype semen uh, to these heterozygous animals, you will get A2A2 cults. So the main purpose is to uh, rise or increase the frequency of A2 genotype in your herd. Uh, so uh, in our population, as you can see, these heterozygous animals uh, are uh very predominant so uh the predictions can be true like uh, a2 sperm using and this is again important uh, point here because this a these caseins have not only uh effects for human health they are affecting directly uh as expected the animals too and uh, many uh, genes, maybe you know or heard this term, they are polymorphic, but at the same time, pleiotropic. Pleiotropism, uh, uh, it can be termed like one gene or one variant can affect multiple traits. This this what we call play pleiotropism in uh, genetics. So this uh, alteration on the position of 67 does not directly or only affect the human health or like the uh, constitution of the milk or uh, the amount of the protein in milk. It directly affects the animal, affects the cow. So it directly affects the production traits of the cows. So it's very important for uh, breeders at cow production levels. So you have to monitorize the effects of this alteration through the herds. So uh, in this uh, study, we, we observed that A2A2, alter A2A2 homozygote cows, have higher production levels too. So uh, maybe, and in many other uh, studies, uh, some researchers uh, observed this uh, uh, result too. So uh, the increasing the frequency of the, the A2 alteration in herds, it's not only about the consumption of A2 milk, uh, but also it's related to the effect, effective uh, breeding of the cattle. And as I said, uh, the very, in very recent uh, study from uh, our laboratory, have shown that these beta-casein uh, A2 genotypes are very closely associated to desired uh, genomic testing results. 
So A2, A2 animals have higher TPI or net merit values. Uh, I don't want to give very detailed uh, information because I have a limited time. Uh, but this TPI or net merit values are very uh, uh, important indexes in genomic selection for the dairy cattle. So if uh, the animals have higher uh, TPI and net merit values, uh, it's from very basically side, uh, these animals are very valuable. So if you have A2, A2 animals and they have uh, higher TPI uh, and NNM net merit values from the genomic testing, this is a very, very uh, desirable thing in your uh, production levels. So we observed that these A2 animals are uh, higher, have higher capacity uh, for milk production too. And for the last level, you can rise, you can increase your production levels, but uh, from the herd size, you have to have calves. So you have to make your company profitable and at the same time sustainable. So you have to monitorize the reproductive performance of these cows too. Uh, so as I said, this, it's a very pleiotropic gene. Uh, so it has many effects on different uh, production levels. And in a very important paper that with my colleagues that we published, in 2019, we observed that these A2 animals have very high production le levels and desirable genomic testing results. But uh, it's very important to note that here, this uh, gene has very significant effects of days before first insemination and first insemination to pregnancy interval. So it means that it affects reproduction performance very efficiently too. And this should be monitorized because you want to have uh, one calf per year. And this is one of the main aims in dairy cattle breeding. Uh, so if without monitorizing and without genetic aspects, if you will try to convert your uh, herd directly to A2, A2 homozygous genotype, you will fail in production. These are very complicated uh, dynamics through uh, molecular biology, animal genetics, and population genetics. So if you, will, if you have a company with a conventional uh, production, as I said, you will have the conventional milk and they have, they are, they include all of these 12 types of the milk. And you have to separate the milk derived from A2 market cause. So you have to genotype both cause. And at the same time, you will, sample, you will have some sampling from the milk products. And you have to uh, test genetically these productions too. And at the last, ultimately, you will have only the milk including only A2 variant. But this is a very uh, uh, hard application to, especially if you are converting your uh, already existing farm to A2 farm, uh, because you have to uh, separate all of these milking parlors and milking systems because you have to prevent the contamination even like one piece of A1 milk should not come to the A2 uh, milk place. So you have to separate it very distinctly uh, from the production level, uh, even from the uh, genomic testing level. So this is the very basic scheme of the genetic evaluation through uh, A2 milk production. You have to have the blood sampling, DNA isolation and genotyping, it can be uh, di with different uh, methods of genotyping. 
and you have to uh, genotype the cows uh, through the as I said, there are 12 different variants, but the, uh, the main uh, subject is here A2 and A1. So you have to find the A2, A2 homozygous animals. And then, uh, according to your hair size, you can uh, convert the A1, A2 heterozygous animals uh, by using A2 genotype spam and try to increase the increase the uh, frequency of the homozygous A2 animals. And uh, with this, uh, with uh, giving uh, A2 genotype sperm to A1, A1 animals is not a very profitable uh, way. Uh, the cooling of A1 homozygous animals is the best way to get increased A2 uh, frequency at the heart size level. So for the last, I will talk about a very brief for the productions uh, in different countries for A2 milk. Uh, as I said, this A1 is associated with milk allergy and many different disorders such as uh, autism and schizophrenia. Even some papers suggested that it can be associated with uh, Alzheimer because of the opioid effects of the uh, beta-casamorphine 7. Uh, so many different countries selling this uh, A2 milk in different production uh, systems because uh, this uh, A2 milk company has the patent of this production. So A2 is uh, using this name uh, is only uh, for this company. But as I said, different uh, types of advertise, uh, advertising uh, this product is evident. Uh, it, this is an uh, example from Turkey. As I said, Jersey breed has high uh, frequency of A2 uh, alteration, A2 variant. So Jersey uh, milk is uh marketing is marketed as like a2 milk in some countries and uh, different types of advertisements you can see like feel good, good inside uh no milk allergy or healthy uh feel healthy or other things and uh one of another very important point here is the selling of breeders. So uh, for the companies, you have to buy directly cows or uh, the male bulls or cattle uh, or cows or directly spam of the animals. Uh, so this is a very huge market, but with the billion, uh, billions of American dollars. So as you can see, this is a uh, information um, about a, a Holstein Frisian uh, breeder, and here you can see the uh, mark of the beta casein genotyping. So it's writing very very uh, big A two A two. So uh, this is the, another important level of advertising. This A2, A2 bull, uh, if you will use this semen from this bull, uh, you will, you can have chance to increase your A2 uh, frequency in your heart. So this is, again, an important advertising uh, uh, method. And it's a, for saying the truth, it's a result of these suggestions. So uh, these genetic companies or breeder companies, they are uh, directly suggesting that these animals are A2, A2 homozygous. And you can see from many different companies, uh, they are mostly genetic companies or sperm companies. They are always showing very distinctly that this is beta casein A2, A2 animal. And they, these have... Uh, high genomic testing results and they carry the desired uh, variant of the milk. And for the last, 
uh, as every product, there are many overdoing uh, advertisements. For example, you can say you can see that this milk is very healthy and it is very beneficial for even for uh, sport uh, sports uh, athletes and many different uh, people. Uh, but I have to say that there is no uh, directly related experimental results uh, from uh, in vitro uh, and the following of in vivo. There is no like comprehensive and detailed uh, result scientific evidence that it is directly showing that A1 is evil in milk so uh, some of the uh, suggestions a little bit overdoing uh, with the uh, beneficial effects of a2 milk and because as i shown you earlier uh, this is a very big very huge marketing uh, issue so uh, this a2 milk is uh, providing very very good uh, money so some some researchers we can say or some uh, people from companies uh, they are showing this milk uh, more than itself maybe it's in some cases it's unethical advertising we have to know that there is a very uh, big need for scientific studies about the human health uh, concerning the A2, A1 uh, alteration. So we have to always keep in mind that uh, like many uh, studies suggesting that this A2 milk from uh, very different uh, effects, uh, beneficial effects on human health, and A1 has very uh, bad uh, influences on human health, but we have to always keep in mind that what is the scientific evidence for that? And as I said earlier, many suggestions are coming from review papers, which are the uh, references of other review papers. And to suggest a very uh, distinct scientific as uh, evidence, you have to need uh, experimental designs. So, um, of course, there are uh, important papers about uh, association between uh, A1, beta-casomorphin 7, and uh, different uh, health disorders. But it's very uh, important to note that there's still need for scientific evidences that directly associate uh, the effects of A A1 milk for the human health. So as conclusion, A2 milk is uh, gaining uh, very, very uh, hardly popularity worldwide. And this is, uh, <laughs> to be honest, it's, mostly on the milk production side, uh, but processed milk products, uh, productions are uh, on the way. So uh, we will see many advertisements on uh, milk powders and infant breeding uh, products. And especially for cheese, there will be a very huge increase. And this is a billion dollar industry uh, from marketing system, from not only from milk production, but only for sperm uh, selling and many other uh, dynamics. But we have to always keep that in mind that uh, for now, no enough scientific evidence uh, directly shows a very distinct result. Uh, and it's important to say that now I'm on a a study in Switzerland for in CIAF for the effects of this uh, beta casein uh, A1, A2 alteration in vitro and in vivo. 
So uh, I hope that with my colleagues, uh, we will uh, at last we will uh, get the uh, most uh, relevant scientific evidence for this issue uh, in uh, real laboratories with the real scientific uh, designs. So uh, thank you for listening to me. I was a little bit uh, long, uh, but I hope you enjoy. And thank you. And if you have some questions, I can uh, answer them with pleasure.